welcome everybody from my side as well. Uh, we're now talking about, as Aidan has pointed out, uh, about electricity and heat, and I'll give you a brief overview of uh, different topics. Without uh, further ado, um, let's go into the outline of this presentation. Uh, first, I will talk about uh, some recent trends in electricity statistics, uh, some key concepts in relation to um, electricity. And of course, in the end, we will have some time um, for questions if there are any. Feel free also to uh, um, raise your questions in the chat. Um, my colleagues will be happy uh, to answer them during the presentation as well. Okay, let's start uh, with the electricity trends. Um, here you can see uh, the evolution of the world elect electricity production between 1974, when the I was founded, so 50 years ago, and 2021. Over this period, uh, the world electricity production increased year upon year uh, and each year, with the exception of 2009 following the onset of the economic crisis and 2020 um, as the onset of COVID-19 pandemic. Overall, this resulted in an almost fourfold increase in electricity production from roughly yeah, 6,300 terawatt hours in 1974 to more than around 27, 28,000 terawatt hours in 2021. Let's um, talk about a small quiz. Um, what is the main fuel used for electricity generation in the world in 2021? For this, you can go to Menti uh, with the code 11181665 and answer the question. We have uh, six different uh, possibilities to answer, uh, natural gas, oil, uh, solar, wind, coal, hydro, or biofuels. So, you can go to Menti. The code um, is provided 11181655. And here you can provide your answer for the main fuel used for electricity generation in the world in 2021. can see some answers popping in. Most of them related uh, to coal. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, we have a clear winner, uh, which is uh, definitely coal. Uh, with now more than 20, 25 answers. And yes, it is correct. Coal has been the main fuel used for electricity generation in the world in 2021. Um, let's dive a bit deeper into the world electricity production by source uh, from 1974 um, to 2021. Over this uh, period, the mix of fuels used to generate electricity change. For instance, if we have a look at the share of electricity production from oil, uh, shaded in dark blue, second from the button, you will see that oil has fallen from above 25% uh, production in 1974 to less than 3% in 2020. Similarly, uh, the share of hydro has fallen from around 23% to 17%, uh, as many of the suitable large-scale sites have already been damped. Uh, by contrast, the share of production from natural gas, shaded in light blue, has increased significantly, rising from about 12% to almost 24% of generation. There has also been a noticeable increase in production from nuclear power, shaded in yellow, with its share rising from about 4% in 1974 to roughly 13% in 2010. During this time, you will notice that coal uh, still remains uh, the main fuel used for power generation with its share changing yeah, very little between 74 and 2021 
one of the reasons for coal still enduring popularity is its relative cost advantage uh, over other fuels. However, um, on the emissions uh, front, there is some good news. If you look at the share um, of electricity output from solar and wind shaded in um, yellow and light green, second from the top, yeah, you will see that although output from these renewable sources is still a relatively small share of total output, the share has been steadily um, increasing in recent years as production costs have fallen and countries have begun to adopt more environmentally friendly policies. Now, uh, let's look at the data for electricity generation in 2021. As mentioned, coal remained the dominant fuel, providing around 35% of electricity production, followed by natural gas, uh, which provides just under um, a quarter uh, of total output. So in total, almost two thirds of all e electricity generation comes from combustible fuels, so coal, oil, gas, um, but also biofuels and waste. With the remaining third produced by non-emitting sources such as nuclear, hydro, solar, wind, and geothermal. As mentioned, the share of output from solar and wind, though, is still relatively small, but has been growing steadily over recent years with the combined share of wind and solar output now over three times um, that of oil. Um, let's look a bit um, at the electricity production by region. Here you can see a graph of electricity production for the OECD and non-OECD countries. And as you can see, the electricity production in non-OECD countries has grown much faster than in OECD countries over the you know, last past 20 years. As a result, production in non-OECD countries surpassed that one of OECD in 2011, you can see the break even here. Since then, electricity production in non-OECD countries has continued to increase while production in OECD countries has plateaued. As of 2020, uh, non-OECD country share of production stands at around 60% yeah, compared with 28% uh, in 1974. However, within the non-OCD countries also trends differ by region. If we disaggregate non-OCD production by region, we can see that much of the growth in recent years has been driven by China and other countries in non-OCD Asia. So um, now talking about the electricity consumption um, by sector, um, you may notice first at first that the consumption has increased fourfold. Also between 1974 and 2021, growing from around 5,000 terawatt hours to almost yeah, 23,000 terawatt hours. If you remember maybe a few slides back, we have seen that production uh, had also increased uh, uh, fourfold, so it makes sense that consumption would increase by a similar amount. However, the numbers are a bit different. Um, you may remember that from the, pro the production graph, production was around 27,000 terawatt hours, while here we can see around uh, 23,000 terawatt hours. Well, uh, why do we have such a difference uh, in these figures? Uh, talking about transmission and distribution losses, 77%, 7, uh, and also uh, the energy industry own use. Looking at the consumption by sector globally, industry uh, is the largest consuming sector. However, its share of consumption has declined over time as restructuring and improvements in energy efficiency, in particular in OCD countries, has seen electricity demand in industry rise at a lower rate than in other sectors. However, this graph is for the world, and you will see on the next slide the consumption patterns in OCD and non-OCD. So if we compare now the sexual consumption in the OCD, which is on the left, with the non-OCD on the right, we can see that there are some differences. In OCD, three sectors, the industry, residential, and also commercial and public services, each, each consume roughly 
yeah, equal amount of electricity. Uh, by contrast, in the non-OCD countries as a whole, industry uh, represents almost half of the total electricity demand. There are many for the uh, reasons for these differences, uh, the structure of the res respective com economies, income levels, and so on, and so on and so forth. However, of course, um, trends again differ at the individual country level. Okay, so far so good. Uh, this was the part about the recent trends in electricity consumption and production. Um, let's move on to some key concepts in the reporting of electricity and heat statistics. First, let's look a bit at the sources of electricity. Electricity is produced both primary and secondary uh, energy. Primary electricity is obtained from natural sources such as hydro, solar photovoltaic, wind, tidal, wave energy. Whereas secondary electricity is obtained from the heat generated by burning combustible fuels, nuclear fission as well from geothermal heat or also talking about solar thermal heat. Also heat can be produced as primary and secondary energy. Primary heat is obtained from natural sources such as solar thermal, geothermal, uh, but also from fission and nuclear reactors. And again, uh, talking about secondary heat, it's obtained by, well, most obviously burning combustible fuels, um, but also from um, transforming electricity um, into heat in electric boilers or by capturing it from rather low temperature sources uh, using heat pumps. Now let's look at the producer side. Um, Electricity and heat producers can be divided into very broad categories, main activity producers and auto producers. And main activity producers generate electricity and heat for third parties as their primary activity. For instance, um, yeah, the main purpose of the facility is to generate electricity or heat. Um, a nuclear power plant is probably a very good example for a main activity producer. By contrast, auto producers generate electricity or heat only as a secondary activity in support of the primary activity. A large chemical manufacturing facility may have an <clears throat> on-site power plant to generate electricity and heat for the use in the mine production process. So some of this electricity and heat may also be sold. However, the main purpose of this facility is then to produce chemicals and not to produce electricity and heat. Therefore, we would classify it as an auto producer. It's also important to note that the distinction between the two producers is not based on whether they are public or private companies, but really on the primary activity. So main activity producers and auto producers can be both public or private companies. Ownership doesn't make a difference. Okay, um, looking now at the plant types, electricity and heat producers can also be further distinguished by the type of plant uh, that is operating. There are three main categories, electricity only plants, uh, which as the name suggests, only produce electricity, heat only plants, which again, as the name suggests, only produce heat, and combined heat and power plants, or also called CHP plants, which generate both electricity and heat at the same time in a combined process. This is also known as cogeneration. Okay, uh, looking now at the reporting conventions used in the reporting of electricity and heat statistics. For main activity producers, the convention is rather simple. All production of electricity and heat is reported. Looking at the auto producers, it's a bit um, yeah, specific. The, there are specific conventions for heat. This is because all producers are also in, industrial consumers that use fuel to power, power their processes. So all electricity produced is reported in the electricity and heat questionnaire. 
However, only the amounts of heat sold are reported. Amounts of heat generated for own use on site are not reported. Similarly, uh, when reporting the associated fuel inputs to electricity and heat production, uh, heat for heat, only the amounts of fuel input associated with the heat sold are reported. In a new questionnaire, there's now the possibility to also report heat consumed by order bruises, um, CHP, um, which can be reported in the questionnaire. This is limited to order producer CHP. Another important concept is the distinction between cross and net production. Um, cross production refers to the total output of electricity or heat generated in a facility before yeah, any is used. However, not all of this is used for productive purposes beyond the power plant. Some of the electricity and heat generated is used on site at the power plant for lighting, heating, and to support power plant operations. This is referred then to as own use. The remainder that is left over after subtracting the own use is the net production. Um, however, remember that for all producers, production only refers to heat sold. That brings me already to the next concept uh, for the convention of reporting, namely the own use. If you may recall, order, for order producers, we only report the amount of heat sold and not the total heat production. Therefore, we can report the total amount of heat used for own use, as this would not, would not align with the reported production figures. So we need to make an assumption. For main activity producers and for all production of electricity, the situation is very simple. Net production is equal to cross production minus own use, as was just described in the previous slide. However, for auto production of heat, it is difficult to distinguish between the heat used for own use and that used to support a planned operation. So we assume cross is net. Okay, um, now we have covered um, yeah, some, some tricky issues um, and let's move on to the electricity and heat supply chain, which also um, is part of the data that we collect in our questionnaire. In terms of supply, we collect uh, fuel inputs to electricity and heat uh, generation, cross production, own use, net production. In addition, uh, we also collect data on electricity used for pumped hydro storage and for electric boilers and heat pumps where the heat output is sold. And finally, on the supply side, we also collect data on trade. So with this data, um, you have the yeah, almost entire supply side of the electricity balance. And now in between supply and consumption, the electricity travels along cables where loss is secure. These data are also collected in the questionnaire. And finally, there are some end users. So we collect the data on consumption across the various consumer sectors such as industry, transport, residential, and so on and so forth. So in theory, the difference between supply and fine consumption figures should just be losses, however, we may also encounter some statistical differences. And finally, we also collect data for capacity, uh, data, peak load, um, and other um, data to help um, our electricity analysts. In our last slide, uh, we have seen that losses are the main difference between supply and consumption figures. So just to give you a bit more detail on the magnitude of losses that can be expected and on yeah, actually when they occur, as electricity travels through cables and transformers, energy is lost along the way. Much of this is in yeah, well, the form of heat 
as the electric current flowing through the cable raises its temperature, this energy um, is lost as it dissipates into the surroundings, reducing the amount of energy that uh, yeah, reaches, in, in fact, the final destination. In general, we expect that losses can be in the range of around 5 to 15%, depending on uh, the maintenance and uh, depending on the individual country level. With losses on the low end of the scale observed in well, more advanced, more compact, very well-maintained grids, and higher losses observed in more older, also more distributed grids, or where there's a higher rate of yeah, meter bypassing, yeah, also called theft. Globally, transmission and distribution losses represent about 7% of the total gross production, and energy industry owners represents about a third and 9%. So in total, about 16% of total gross production um, is lost. It's a sizable amount. Let's look at one more important concept, uh, useful yeah, also to check the related electricity supply, which is the generation efficiency. It is calculated as the total gross energy produced by a plant divided by the energy content of the fuel used to produce it. So actually, energy out, energy in. Mm, the efficiency should actually be or must be less than 100%. So you cannot create energy out of nothing. And the, the expected efficiency will vary depending on fuel and technology. So for instance, combined cycle gas turbines would be expected to more, be, be more efficient than traditional co power plants. The efficiency must be calculated using energy units. Mark has pointed it out um, also before in the call. And you must use the same units for the inputs and outputs. So here's uh, an, an example, 20 plus 45 as an output divided by 100 input, you get an efficiency of around 65%. So efficiency can really be useful um, to check electricity statistics. And uh, we can use our knowledge of expected or historic efficiency values to check if the reported inputs and outputs of the plants make sense. So moving on to one more convention for uh, electricity, namely trade. Unlike with other fuels, trade of electricity and heat is reported on the basis of borders crossed and not origin and destination. In addition, reported imports and exports include amounts in transit. Um, maybe one example, for example, if Portugal was to export electricity to France, through Spain, then as France and Portugal do not share a common border, um, they would uh, not report trade with each other, but with Spain. So Portugal would report exports to Spain, Spain would report imports from Portugal and exports to France. And finally, France would uh, report imports from Spain. So Portugal and France would not report trade with each other. This differs from the conventions used for, for other fields. Finally, um, talking now about one more key concept in electricity statistics that is useful to be aware of, and that is the difference between energy and power. Simply put, power is the rate at which energy is used. So power is simply energy divided by time. Power is measured in watts. Energy is measured in joules. So one watt is equal to one joule per second. Obviously, um, some numbers might get quite big and a bit confusing after a while. So for convenience, we call um, also 3,600 terajoules uh, a watt hour. And this is the amount of energy that one watt produces uh, of power would use in one hour. This is an important distinction, what refers to power and what hours refer to energy. And this concept is useful also for next uh, topic, which I briefly want to touch, which is capacities. In addition uh, to production consumption and trade data, the electricity questionnaire also captures data on the power plant capacities, specifically net maximum capacities. Net maximum capacity is simply the maximum power output that a power plant can produce with um, while all 
plans running at uh, full blast on the yeah on a specific day on the 31st December of the reporting year. These are useful data for analysts to have. However, they can also be useful for, for us, for statisticians, when checking the data as we can compare the actual reported production values with the maximum potential production values to check if the data makes sense. This value, the actual production divided by the potential production is called the capacity factor. Again, it should be less than 100%, except if there were planned closures near the end of the year, in which case the figures may sometimes be distorted. Also, there are different expected values, again, depending on the technology. For instance, nuclear plants are expensive to build and therefore are typically, typically run as much as possible, whereas solar PV, which does not run at night and is both weather and location dependent, will have a lower capacity factor. Okay, then there are um, some more um, slides about the data collection. Uh, considering the time, I will not touch these now and will open the floor for any questions. <laughs>